Welcome to Inside Azure AI Foundry, where we put the latest models and tools to the test. I'm April, your host for this episode, and today we're diving into how to use Azure AI Foundry models with GitHub Copilot. For those unfamiliar, GitHub Copilot is an AI pair programmer that works alongside you directly in VS Code. It suggests entire lines or blocks of code, answers questions, and assists with routine tasks such as writing unit tests and debugging, and it's all done within Visual Studio Code. You were once limited with respect to which models you could use with GitHub Copilot, but that's all changed because now you can use Foundry models with the help of the AI Toolkit. The AI Toolkit is a VS Code extension that streamlines the creation of generative AI apps and agents. So whether you're working locally or in the cloud, with AITK, you can build, test, and deploy AI agents using popular language models from providers like Azure AI Foundry, GitHub, OpenAI, Anthropic, Google, plus more. There's a couple things that you'll need to set up before you can start using Foundry models with GitHub Copilot. And in this video, I'll take you through those steps. Let's get started. We're going to kick things off in the Azure AI Foundry portal. The first thing that we need to do is to create an Azure AI Foundry project. To do so, you start by selecting Create New. And then within the Create Project window, you're going to select the Azure AI Foundry resource as a resource type, and that's also the recommended option followed by next. Now you'll need to provide a name for your project. All right, now that we have the project name selected, we have the advanced options section where we can further provide values for the, the setup. So to start off at the very top, when we create this project, it is going to create a brand new Azure AI Foundry resource. And what it's going to do is take the name from the project and add it here to populate that field. And it's going to append resource towards the end. You're more than welcome to modify that name. Next, you'll also need to select the subscription. If you happen to have access to more than one subscription, you can select the drop down and select the appropriate subscription. Then we have the resource group. So a brand new resource group is going to be created by default. However, if you would like a different resource group, you can select the drop down and find your existing resource group. I'm going to use an existing one. And then finally, the region default for me is going to be East US2, and that's going to be the region that I'm going to use for this project. And then finally, you'll select create. It will take a couple minutes to create the project, but once it's been created, the Azure AI Foundry portal will open to the page for the project. All right, the project has now been created and we can view all the information here within the Azure AI Foundry portal. Next in Visual Studio Code, what we need to do is install the AI Toolkit extension. You can open up the extension view and search for AI Toolkit as I've done, and then it should likely be the very first option. Make sure that it is an extension provided by Microsoft. Just below the title, there will be a button that says install. You're going to select that button to install the extension. I do want to point out that this extension is part of an extension pack, and it's also going to include the Azure AI Foundry extension as well. To open up the extension, if you don't see the icon itself in the left hand side of the screen, you can select the three dots and then you can find it located within there and it'll say AI toolkit. And then from there, within the AI toolkit view, you'll be able to see a section for my resources, model tools, agent and workflow tools, MTP workflow, and then help and feedback. The next extension that we need to install is the Azure resources extension. This extension is going to enable you to sign into Azure. So that way we can access the Azure AI Foundry project that was created. Likewise, you'll see an install button just below the title. Since I've already have the extension installed, it doesn't show here, but what you will need to do is select that install button. Once the extension is installed, it'll display as an Azure icon on the left hand side, and it'll look like this one that I have here on the screen, it'll say Azure. You can select that and that'll open up the extension. From here, what you'll need to do is actually sign into Azure. To do so, you'll select sign into Azure. It will warn you that Azure Resources wants to sign in using Microsoft in which you'll select allow. From here, you'll enter in your login credentials to Azure, select next, authenticate, and then you'll be signed in. Now that I'm signed in, I'll see a resources section. And in that resources section, I'll see a list of all the subscriptions that my account has access to. 
What we now need to do is set the default project for the AI toolkit. To do so, we'll navigate back to the AI Toolkit extension view. Within my resources in the models section, there will be an option that says Azure AI Foundry. If you expand that, you'll notice that currently no project is selected. To select a project, you're going to hover over where the section says Azure AI Foundry, right click and select Select Project. This is going to load the descriptions that are available to your account. You'll select the one that has the location of the Azure AI Foundry project that you created. The next thing you'll do from here is pick a project. Now that I've selected my project, the extension is going to reload the model section. And as I can now see that my project, Gittin's demo, GHCP, has been selected as the default project. What we now need to do is deploy models to be used with GitHub Copilot. And to do so, we're going to start off in the model catalog. Here within the model catalog, I can filter to view all the Azure AI Foundry models. To do so, I'll scroll down to the section where we have the filters. I'll select hosted by, and then from there, I'll select Azure AI Foundry. This then will provide me with access to all the Azure AI Foundry models that are going to be available and can be consumed and utilized with GitHub Copilot. In my case, I would like to deploy GPT-4.0. So to do so, I'll select Deploy to Azure AI Foundry. It's going to fix the project and model resources, and then you'll have the model deployment screen appear. On here, you can select all the specific information for the model deployment itself. The project in the connected AI resource auto-populates based on your default project selected. Down here in the deploy a model section, you'll have the model automatically selected, but in the event you want to change it, you can select the dropdown and select the appropriate model. Next, you need to provide a deployment name. The default name is going to be the name of the model, and I do recommend keeping this as is. However, if you have a reason to change the name of the model itself, you're more than welcome to rename it. There are use cases where that may be necessary, but for ease of remembering the actual name of the model, that's why I recommend keeping it as the default name of the model, which is always usually going to be the model name itself. You can also select the deployment type as well. So whether you want standard or one of the other options available, you can select deployment type drop down to change that. I'm going to stick with standard. And then down in the deployment details, we have the version upgrade policy. So by default, it's going to upgrade once the new default version is available, but you do have other options available on screen. Then we have the model version itself. And so the one that I currently have selected is the one from 5.13.2024, but I can always change to a different one. And then we have the tokens per minute. So at its lowest, it's going to provide 1000 tokens per minute. Experience has shown me that I will likely need more. So I'm going to increase it to 8,000 tokens per minute. And then as for the content filter, we provide the default Microsoft one. There's more than one version available, but the default is going to be the latest version. I do recommend using the latest version. And then finally, we'll select deploy to Azure AI Foundry you will receive a notification that in doing this deployment, this action can incur costs to your Azure subscription. Assuming you're okay with this, you can select deploy to proceed with deployment. The model is deployed literally that quickly. And then from there, if I open back up the AI toolkit view, and if I open the model section and navigate to the Azure AI Foundry section in particular, I can see GPT-4.0 has been deployed. Alternatively, I can deploy models instead within the model catalog within the Azure AI Foundry portal. Similar experience to what we saw within the AI toolkit. I do have that ability to filter as well to find models that are suitable for the need of what I have, but I do recommend deploying via the AI toolkit. And then to view all the models that have been deployed with this project, you're going to navigate within my assets to models and endpoints. And this will list all the information for the models that have been deployed. Do keep in mind that any model deployment can be used beyond GitHub Copilot chat. You can also use deployed models in whatever AI solution or agent or assistant that you're creating. Back here within Visual Studio Code, I'm going to open up GitHub Copilot chat. 
by selecting the icon at the top. And to give myself more space to view the chat window, I'm going to select the square icon to expand the view. And now from here, what I need to do is select the models from Azure AI Foundry that I want to use with GitHub Copilot. So to do so, we're going to select the pick model drop down. Here we can see which models have already been provided for use with GitHub Copilot, but we're going to select manage models. And in doing so, we have the option to select a provider. We're going to be consuming models through the AI toolkit. So the three options at the bottom are going to be the ones you're going to be looking for, specifically the Azure AI Foundry via AI toolkit, since we want to use models that we've deployed via Azure AI Foundry. In selecting that option, I do get a list of models that are available. Keep in mind, we only deployed one model. However, what's happening here is that you can select all the models that you desire to use with GitHub Copilot. In the event you do not have a model deployed already in the selection that you're choosing, you will be prompted to download or deploy that model at the first use of using it with GitHub Copilot. What I've done is set you up for success and we deployed the model in advance. Since I already know which model we wanna use, I'm going to go ahead and search GPT-4.0. You will notice that next to some of the model names in parentheses, it may say supports agent mode. What that means is that this model is going to be usable with GitHub Copilot's agent mode. Otherwise, you're going to be able to use it with the ask mode. I can see that the GPT-40 model that I deployed is available, and it even shows me that it's part of the project that I've created, which is at Gittin's demo GHCP. I'm going to go ahead and select that one, followed by OK. Now that I've added the model to my list of models available, when I go back to pick model, it will show up down in the section for the Azure AI Foundry via AI Toolkit models. I can now select that model. I'm going to switch to ask mode actually, because I don't have an agent that needs or a need for an agent to take any action. And I'm going to send in the prompt, how to create a virtual environment in Python. And I'll submit that prompt. Now we have a response back from GitHub Copilot, and we do have instructions on how to go about creating a virtual environment. And we have the option to also be shown how to do so with the command palette. So far, we've taken a look at cloud hosted models, but we do have the option to use local models. A local language model is an AI model that runs directly on your own device or server without the need of a cloud service. People often use them if they want greater privacy, control, and offline availability, especially when they don't want sensitive data leaving their environment. Boundary local models are also available to use with GitHub Copilot. To get started with using local models, I'm back here in the AI Toolkit extension within the model catalog. I'm going to scroll down and apply the filters to find the Foundry local models. Select that, and it'll filter things out to only show us the Foundry local models that are available. I do already have 5.4 added. And so what that means is that this local model has already been downloaded to my computer and it is ready for use with GitHub Copilot. In the event I have not downloaded this already, what will happen when you select add is that it will automatically start the download of the model. The speed in which the model gets downloaded will depend on your hardware. I will fair warn you that it may take some time for the download to complete. But once the download is complete, you'll be able to view the model within my resources, models, and down in the foundry local section. So I have 5.4 generic CPU already downloaded and ready to use. To use the foundry local model with GitHub Copilot, what I'll need to do is go back to select pick model followed by manage models. And then from here, I'm going to select Foundry Local via AI Toolkit as a provider. And then I have a list of all the models that are available for use. I will go ahead and select 5.4 generic CPU and then OK. And then that now makes the model available from the list of models listed within my pick model. 
and I can see it here within the Foundry Local via AI Toolkit section as a 5.4 generic CPU one model. If I select that model, I can now submit a question or a prompt to GitHub Copilot. And let's say in this case, I want to ask the question, what is a variable in Python? The speed in which we're going to get a response is going to be dependent on your hardware. My computer isn't necessarily the most performant with respect to using local models, so it may take some time before I get a response generated. However, you may receive a response significantly faster depending on the hardware that you're using. All right, and now we are starting to have a response generated from this local model. It is taking quite some time. This is real time in which we are seeing the response being generated. So do keep this in mind should you choose to use a local model with GitHub Copilot. That wraps up this episode of Inside Azure AI Foundry. Use Foundry models today with GitHub Copilot to accelerate your programming. I'll be back soon with another episode sharing the latest drops and feature from Azure AI Foundry. But until then, come join me in the Discord. I love to know what you're doing. Also, that's where you can post questions and get support. All right. I'll see you in the next episode.